what the enemy is bringing your way. You know, school is going tough. We're all in quarantine. I want to encourage you. You're doing such a good job. We bless you all out there. And we just continue to release Proverbs 31 over you and over your home, over uh, your, your household in the name of Jesus. So we just want to celebrate the moms. The one thing I want to say also this morning is that Mother's Day is not just for children who have their own children, as in you became pregnant and you gave birth to a child. I want to give a shout out to all the spiritual moms out there, young and old, every generation. There are people who don't have children on their own, but they are spiritual mothers to so many people out there. You might be young and you're not even married yet, but you are a mom a spiritual mom to someone. So the aspect of being a mother entails so many different areas. So if you know out there that you're encouraging, you're, 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 being, um, you're out there helping other people, guiding them, nurturing them, and you know, nurturing is being a mother. So if you're nurturing people, you are being a mother, and happy Mother's Day. Amen. And uh, we need to uh, give a shout-out to Lisa uh, Robido. Yes. Um, she, and she got uh, four children all at one time, and so uh, we need to honor her today as a mother of mm -hmm. four that are not her own uh, naturally, but she is doing an amazing job, and so it, uh, uh, we just want to bless her today. Yes. And uh, so you, we're Lisa. looking at lots of change, and so uh, uh, I got a message about change today, so the church will change. Amen? Amen. And it is changing. Yes. Thanks, Jennifer. You're welcome. And <clears throat> so this morning I want to talk about the, the church changing, and uh, we don't always have a good uh, feeling about changes, and what if I told you uh, 10 years from now, our life would be exactly the same as it is today? Oh, you're not, you're not liking that idea, if it would be exactly the same as it is today. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, COVID-19 is... Um, changed everything that we've been doing, but you wouldn't want to stay the way it is today, and you wouldn't want to, uh, uh, so we're afraid of change, but we just need to realize that change is going to take place. Change is growth, and change is a challenge, uh, but we wouldn't uh, uh, want to stay the same at age 10 very long. If you're 10, you want to be uh, 13, uh, so we're always looking for some other better time in our lives. And so, uh, and when you're uh, 13, you want to be 16. And so changes are just a natural part of uh, choice. Uh, uh, ch not choice, but see. change is a natural um, part of life. And we have to choose uh, to be a part of change. So what I want to say today is I believe that there's a lot of change coming uh, right now for the church. Uh, there's obviously change taking place in the church. We don't have meetings, uh, uh, corporate meetings. We can't have more than uh, 15 people. I think we only got uh, two, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine of us here this morning just helping us to do this video. But uh, I just believe that there's going to be a lot of change take place in the church. I believe the way that we're going to do church in the future is going to change. I believe that the way that we're going to do things as Christians is going to change. Uh, and so uh, the first thing that I want to encourage uh, believers that are watching here today and, and non-believers too, but just anybody that's interested in listening to the Word of God today, I think the first thing that I want to encourage people to do is, uh, is start reading your Bible about end time events. I think it's time for us as a church to start looking at end time again. I know growing up, uh, I was pretty interested in end time events and sort of memorized some of the charts that they had out there and thought I had a pretty good handle on it. Then after I got into conflict or discussions with some people that had different opinions, then I realized that uh, uh, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. But right now, in the way things are unfolding now, I think that we need to, as believers, get uh, updated now on our end time Bible events. So we got to get into the Bible, we got to get into the Word, and we got to find out what the Bible is saying uh, about end times. And so you can start with just a few places to tweak your interests. Uh, start with Daniel chapter 11 and 12, just read them. Or go to Matthew chapter 24 and, and 25. <clears throat> Go to uh, Revelation chapter 16, <clears throat> if you think the Revelation is uh, complicated. 
just start maybe, I don't know what it is, verse 12 or something in chapter 16. But uh, go to those passages of scriptures and uh, read them over and over and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what the, uh, the revelation of these events really mean for us today because I believe that if you read these, these chapters in the Bible and you start asking the uh, Holy Spirit to help you uh, understand current events because I want you to look at in light of current events. There's things that are happening in the world today uh, that are challenging us as Christians uh, they're challenging the world. They're challenging those that uh, don't have any faith in anything. But if we have uh, some good, uh, limited even, just some good understanding of uh, biblical end times, biblical events, things that, uh, that Jesus talked about, things that are in the Word of God uh, about the end times and the days that we're living in. And I believe we're in a, we're, we are in end times. And so I think if we uh, read our Bible in light of the globalist agenda, just take that for example. Put those two things in your mind as you start reading the Word of God. There's a globalist agenda out there. There's a globalist agenda of power and control uh, where, the, where the globalist agenda wants to control globally what's happening in the world today. The UN is part of that. And so there's... Uh, the Bible will put light on what's happening in the world today if we look at those scriptures. And then I think that uh, we need to uh, go a little bit farther and get educated a little bit about who the UN is. What is this a global agenda? Uh, what about the power that's out there now in the world today? What about the greed? Uh, what about central banks and World Bank and the IMF and, and uh the power that they have over nations and their economies and the World Health Organization right now, too, with this pandemic. And who is the leader of the World Health Organization? People say to me, who's in charge? My wife says to me, who's in charge? Who says that we can't do this stuff? And I've heard that said many times by other people as well. And so who is in charge? World Health Organization seems to be uh, predominant right now in their opinion of things. But who is the leader of the World Health Organization? Have you taken a few minutes to Google and research that and find out who the leader is? Where did he come from? What's his history? What's his background? Why is he in that position? And you'll be surprised at some of the things that you'll uncover there. But how does that fit with biblical understanding? You have to look at these things. Think about uh, 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 the idea of, of uh, the power of what's happening today. I think that uh, these things that are happening today are, are been activated for a long time. They've been in the process for a long time. I don't think they can be stopped. I think, the, I think it's too big a deal. I think it's like a, 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 a beast that can't be controlled. You know, I work with horses, and you get a, you get a pretty wild horse sometimes, and there is always a way to uh, bring them into some type of control. But I've had a horse around that I thought, well, I'm not going to spend any more time uh, with it because it's just too uncontrollable, Could, wasn't willing to learn, wasn't willing to change. But here's, we got, a, we got a concept that's happening in the world today that seems to have incredible power over the globe. No churches are functioning anywhere in the world today, meeting more than 15 people. It, it, is, it is beyond our comprehension. And so I believe that there's a, if you look at that word beast, I believe that uh, the word beast is, uh, is, it just means that it can't be controlled. And I think they've been taking control quietly. This global agenda has been taking uh, control quietly over all peoples of the world, all peoples. And if you want to go further in your research, do some research on the origin of the Federal Reserve, and you'll find out the Federal Reserve's not federal, and it's not a reserve. And so uh, uh, I think... Uh, that if you look at this globalist agenda as the beast, and you look at that in the, in the Revelation chapter uh, 16, you'll find uh, the beast is represented by a man, represented uh, else, other, where, other places in the book of Revelation, as a number and as the Antichrist. And so that's really concerning for us as Christians, uh, but it should be concerning for the whole world. And, and I'm going to get to something here with the reason I'm saying all this. This uh, globalist agenda has, uh, is shutting down economies around the world. And what's the reason for that? We, we think that there's a lot of good things that they say, 
And it all sounds good, but there's another motive behind it. You've got to look for the motive behind what's, what is happening today. And so I think that uh, we've fallen into the globalists have uh, shut down the world economy. Uh, they've shut down churches. They've, you know, look at, think about Mother's Day. You know, it's hard to find flowers today. Uh, you know, you can't even be close to anybody. You can hardly have a party at your house. Uh, um, you know, can you kiss your mother? Well, I can't kiss mine. She's not here. But, uh, uh, you know, like th these are just things that we got to think about. Like, where is all this power coming from uh, that has this influence globally around the world? Small places in North and e Ethiopia really being impacted in their lifestyle is something that, that they would have a thousand years ago. But anyways, I'm just saying that uh, there's, a, there's an agenda out there and we have no choice but other than to follow some of this agenda. But I believe that God has uh, given us as a church and Christians a new opportunity. I believe that this is something we need to celebrate over. There's a new opportunity for us to reach people all around us uh, and people can't figure out who's in control of everything and somebody has to have some answers. Somebody's got to have some hope. Somebody's got to have uh, some words of life and encouragement and so I believe that's an opportunity for us as a church and so I believe that the way that we're doing church is going to change. Uh, we don't like change, but I believe that it's go we're going to have to uh, look at some of the ways that the change is going to take place. It's going to motivate us. It's gonna, this change that's taking place is a little bit being forced on us, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's part of the plan of God. God's not been taken by surprise by this. Uh, and so I believe that uh, uh, this change is going to motivate us to be soul winners. It's going to motivate us to be teachers. It's going to be motivative, <coughs> motivative, uh, motivate us to get involved in the gifts and the call of God that are resting on our lives. But I want to shift gears a little bit here right now. I got started on something here a few weeks ago. And uh, uh, it was uh, reading the scripture. So I want to go to the scripture right now. Uh, Luke chapter 22 Verses 17 to 24, I'm, I'm reading from the contemporary English version here uh, this morning. And so uh, it's a little, it, it took me by surprise a little bit. And so I want to uh, share that with you. I've been sharing it a little bit on Sunday nights here at, at our prayer meeting with a few. Uh, but uh, uh, Luke chapter uh, 22, uh, 17 to 24, it's a little bit different in the book of Luke uh, about the Last Supper. And so I'm going to start with verse 17. Jesus took a cup of wine in his hand and he gave thanks to God. And then he told the disciples, take this wine and share it with each other. Divide it and distribute it amongst yourselves. So get, picture this. You got Jesus. Actually, I should just keep reading because I'm going to get back into it. But start with just changing your thoughts about how that day was. Jesus took a cup of wine and he said to the disciple beside him, here, take this, pour a little bit in, in the, for the next guy and then move it around the table so that everybody gets a little bit of the wine in their cup. Verse 18, it says, I tell you that I will not drink any more wine until the kingdom of God comes. Verse 19 says, uh, Jesus took some bread in his hands, gave thanks uh, for it. And when he gave thanks for it, he he, uh, he broke the bread and handed it to his disciples. Now, he might have broke the bread and handled some, you know, to this disciple and that disciple. Uh, I'm just trying to get you to picture uh, the Last Supper a little bit here, the way it was coming to me a couple weeks ago. And then he said, this is my body which is given for you. Eat this as a way of, as a way of remembering me. They had barely started their supper. Jesus shared the cup of wine around the table. Then he broke the bread and, uh, and said, eat this as a way of remembering me. I, I'll, I'll get back to this in a minute. But then after the meal, he took the cup in his hand. So they had the meal. So now he passed out the wine, passed out the bread. Then they had their meal. And after the meal, uh, they... Uh, Jesus took the cup of wine in his hand and said, this is my blood. It is poured out for you. And with it, God makes his new agreement or covenant with us. Doesn't say that there, but verse 21, it says, uh, and the one who will betray me is here at the table with me. 
The Son of Man will die in the way that was been decided for him, basically in Scripture. Uh, but it will be terrible for the one who betrays me, him. Then they began to question among themselves which of them, which of them it was who would do such a thing. Wow. Now, there was also a dispute among them about which uh, among them, to which uh, of them should be considered the greatest. Okay, we're going back to the table now. So Jesus has a cup of wine. He shares it uh, with this disciple, and then they go around the table with the wine. He breaks the bread, shares the bread. They have their meal, and then Jesus makes this declaration uh, about a new covenant and then also makes a declaration about somebody betraying them. And then they get into a discussion. Well, who would do that? They, couldn't, they didn't even know who was amongst them. And then they started talking about who was the greatest. I don't think the disciples had a clue what was going on. And so... I, th I think that uh, this is the challenge that we have today. And so if, if, we, if we see this concept here where Jesus taking the cup of wine and shares it uh, a little bit with uh, the others at the table, what about us? Have we been at the table? Do we share a little bit of Jesus at the table that we're sitting at <clears throat> When we're having fellowship and friendship. Jesus broke the bread and shared it with his disciples. Do we, do we break the bread and, of, uh, of the word of God and share it with our, at our table? There's lots of tables. So Jesus broke the bread and shared it where? The place was a table. We, ha we sit at the table. Jesus said, remember me. And he was at the table. And the, the truth is that uh, the blood here represents, uh, the wine here represents the blood of Jesus that was poured out for you and me. So it's a representation. The bread is a representation of Jesus. The blood is a representation of Jesus. And, uh, and so Jesus was pouring out a little bit into everybody's cup around the table. Basically, Jesus didn't do it. The disciples did it for one another. So you can see that there's, a, there's an application being applied here where Jesus would want us to share his lifeblood with one another at a table. This is what I'm getting at, at a table. Keep thinking this thought, table. Because I believe that he's saying to us as believers that we should be sharing uh, the word of God at a table. That we should be sharing uh, the life of Christ at the table. We should be sharing the fact that Jesus can forgive us of our sins and, and to change our lives. And we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can have power in our lives. We can have, we can have the hope of eternity at a table. We can share it at a table. You know what we've been doing in the past is we've been bringing everybody together into a church building and expecting pastors and preachers and teachers uh, to do it from a, from a platform like this. But I believe that there's something happening in the body of believers today and it's going to be more about the table than it's going to be about the church building. I think the church building is still going to have its place. I think the church building is still going to have a, an opportunity to reach people, but I think it's for the encouragement of the body of believers. I believe that, that the church buildings are still going to be used, and maybe we're going to find more functional purposes for them uh, during the week instead of uh, uh, having them empty in the week. But God is up to something right now, and there's an opportunity for the church to change, and are we willing to make a change so that we can reach the community that's around us? So I, I really believe that God's really doing something here, something new, something powerful. He was pouring out his blood in every cup, and it was a new covenant. And what about if it's a new way today? What about if he wants to do something new in this end time season that we're in? And so now uh, I just want to stop for a minute to think about what the disciples were thinking. 
They, they didn't have a clue what Jesus was doing. They, they didn't realize, they knew it was a Passover, but they, they still not thinking that Jesus is going to die. They, he'd been told them, he told them that many times, but they still didn't get it. Jesus said there's somebody at the table that was going to betray him. And they started asking themselves, not me, not me. Oh, that wouldn't be me. And then Judas left, you'll see in one of the other passages, that Judas left and they never noticed him leaving. They thought he was just going to give some money away. No, he was going to get money. He wasn't going to give money away. So <clears throat> the disciples weren't aware of what was happening. Uh, at the table, they weren't aware. At an intimate setting, you can't always tell what's happening in somebody's heart. You can't always tell what people are thinking. You can't always tell what people are feeling. But I don't think that the disciples... Uh, uh, had a clue, and then started talking about who's the greatest. I think that happens a lot in the church today, in the body of believers. Uh, we're still worried about, well, it's not me. I didn't do it. We're, we're too worried about uh, uh, who's the greatest, who got more recognition than somebody else. We're too, we're too concerned about uh, somebody that might have offended us instead of just letting it go. We're, we're, we're concerned about our positions and opportunities and it's about us and it's about me. It's about my family. It's about what I look like. It's, it's what I'm perceived to be. But let's review this passage in light of changes that are going to come today. Uh, I just believe that God is, uh, is really wanting to stir us up as, as a body of believers here, even at Lighthouse Church, but especially to anyone that's listening uh, when Jesus uh, passed the cup, here's how I picture it. He gave it to John. And then John <clears throat> gave it to James. And then James passed it on to Peter. Peter passed it on to Andrew. Andrew passed it on to Matthew and so on. Went on around the table. They all got a little bit of the life of Jesus. We can do the same thing. In a table setting, we can do it in a restaurant. We can do it in our home. We can do it today at Mother's Day if we get to meet with our mother or our family. We, we can share Jesus. We can share the life of Jesus. We can share uh, the, pow <clears throat> the power of the blood of Jesus. We can share the that representation of the blood of Jesus to people around the table. Now, I know not everybody... In every household is, uh, is believers. And so you have to be careful a little bit with that. I'll talk about that later. But I'm just trying to say we got to look at the table. You know, we go for coffee at Tim Hortons. Where do we sit? At a table. Do we share Jesus at the table? We eat at a table three times a day. Are we reminded of Jesus every time we sit down? Do we remember him? Are we taking communion? You know, we could have a little grape juice at every, at every meal if we wanted to, but even once a day. We, are we reminded of, of the power that there is in, in just the, the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus heals us and forgives us and restores us and delivers us. And, and we can forgive others through the power of the blood of Jesus. It gives us life now. gives us life for eternity. Jesus broke bread and said, remember me. And so, do we remember Jesus when we break the bread? Do we remember Jesus when we're having a donut? Oh, yeah, I know some people feel guilty when they have a donut. But uh, uh, bread represents the body of Jesus. That was broken for us. His body, you could have a donut and share it with somebody and tell them, that Jesus will heal your body. You can have a coffee with somebody and tell them that Jesus uh, will heal your body and give you life now, give you life for eternity. 
but life now. His body is broken so that our bodies could be healed, healed now in the life that we live here and now so that we can have a full life here and now so that we can have a life of health and we can have a life of, of, of uh, blessing and favor and prosperity. He wants us to be blessed now. He wants us to fulfill the call of God that's on our lives. The body of Jesus was broken so that we could have life and health and healing and live in divine health now. And that's what the message of the world needs to hear. People, I know there's lots of people that are concerned about uh, the, the flu and the COVID-19. Where's your confidence? Is your confidence in the Lord? How many people have we heard testimonies of that got COVID-19 and they were 90 years old and they, got, and they got healed by the power of God? Young people have got healed. There's not many young people die with COVID-19, but there's, but there's something about having our confidence in the word of God, in the blood of Jesus and, the, and his broken body so that we can affect the world that's around us. So I want to look at, uh, take a few minutes to look at uh, uh, how the church is, is going to change. I think we're for, uh, facing this uh, demonic global agenda and uh, sounds good to some. Here's one thing that sounds good with the globalist. Um, the, I think that one of the heads of the, the uh, European uh, common market there, whatever you call it, union, uh, said if we can agree together, we won't have wars. See, that's a good, a good point they're making. But what's the motive behind it and who's been behind all of this? So they're saying we won't have to have a Second World War, a Third World War, if we could agree and talk with one another and agree with one another. And so we'll come under one big umbrella of, of, uh, of understanding. And so the power should go to not elected officials, should go to the people that understand the globalist agenda. But what does the Bible say about these results where people are controlled, the masses are controlled? And uh, I, just, I just see that masses are being controlled right now and it's lining up with the Word of God. It's lining up with the book of Revelation. It's lining up with uh, uh, Daniel chapter 11 and 12. And so uh, we need to understand something else as believers uh, that Jesus says that he's going to take us out. When is he going to take us out? The challenge for us is to find out when, what season is it going to be when Jesus takes us out of this world. But what is God really after? He's after a great harvest of souls. I see that in the book of Revelation, it, uh, a voice says to the angel to reap the earth. And so what does that mean? Does that mean the mankind and earth? I mean, he's after souls. He's after those that he created, those that he loved, those that he gift, gift, gifts and talents to. And so I believe that there could be trouble ahead for us as believers, but we have to believe that we're in the right season and the right time. God, God ordained for us to be alive now at this time because he wants us to be powerful and effective uh, in reaching others. Or, uh, and I believe that we're going to reach people around tables so I, i'm going to say that quite a few times here today i believe that we're going to uh we're going to use tables our kitchen table our our dining room table our boardroom table our our coffee room lunch room table the table at tim hortons the table in a restaurant we're going to use tables because tables are something that I believe that God is interested in because uh, uh, what happens around a table, what happens around the table is friendship and fellowship and, and uh, uh, you know, common, uh, common causes and common ideas and, and coming together for certain things. But there's people in the world today that are so afraid of what's going on. And they want someone to tell them about the end times. They want someone to tell them about what's going on. What does the Bible say? Now, they might not be thinking about what's the Bible say, but if we say the things that are happening in the world today are in the Bible, they'll say they are. Oh. So we had Paul Hayes with us on a Zoom call this week, Friday. You can find it uh, on Facebook, and, and it's, uh, it's about an hour. And uh, Paul is, uh, is well-versed in end-time um, events and so uh, you can take that in but 
talking to Paul the other day. He was talking about a friend that he had. And he started, uh, well, the friend was talking about this, the condition the world is in today and the COVID-19. And Paul said something to him, uh, these are signs of the end times. Well, he didn't really know much about that. And so uh, Paul said, you know, that it's in the word of God. And, that, and so the friend said to him, you're scaring me. And Paul says, oh, no, he says, I, I don't want to scare you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to scare you. He said, you know what? I, I won't even mention it again. If this brings fear to your heart, I won't mention it again. And the friend said, oh, no, no, no. Tell me more. You see, then the door opened. So I think what we've done in the past is that we've wanted to hammer people with the word of God and say you're asleep or wake up or get a grip or... And we're not kind, we're not careful with the words that we use. So I, I believe we, we got to approach the, the subject gently, lovingly, and you, we can make a comment like, you know, these are the things that are happening today, but you've got to read your Bible, you've got to know what the Bible says, you've got you to understand the Word of God. You've got to say these are events that are, take, that are already predicted in the Bible. They are? Oh, but then as you tell them what it, what it is, and then if fear comes and they want to reject you, then let it go. But if they say, tell me more, that's your opportunity. When they, when they lean in, and uh, Paul told about a, a group of people, it was families, I guess, and so someone, one of them said, uh, one of the women said, this scares me. And he says, I'm sorry, don't... Uh, I don't want to scare you. But no, we need to know. We need to know. We've never heard this. We need to know. You see, the world needs to know. And we've got to find a way to share it. And this is the point of the table. So when you come to the table with someone, you're already friends. When you come to the table with someone, there's some kind of common ground. There's some kind of common union. And so you come to a table and you're, you're, uh, you're inviting uh, this person to be with you or people to be with you uh, because there's, there's some common union. There's some communion. The blood of Jesus, this broken body, it's the topic. Remind, being reminded of Jesus. And we come to a table and we have friends there that don't know the word of God and we've got some communion going to take place here. We've got some common union that's taking place. We've got a desire uh, to reach somebody. And they like our company. And so it's our opportunity to share Jesus in a powerful way that fits with the end time uh, uh, situation that we find ourselves in. There's an end time agenda, but God has an agenda too. And his agenda is souls to be saved and lives to be changed. And, uh, it should be a table of fellowship. It should be a table of friendship. It should be a table of new friendships and new relationships. It's a table of restoration, the restoration of friendships and, re and, and relationships. It's a table of caring. It's a table of giving. It's a table of serving. It's a table of helping. It should be a table of healing in our conversation. I'm talking about the conversations that are taking place around the, around the table. It's a table of, of healing of, of life's hurts and problems and issues. And it's a table of revelation, a revelation of Jesus. It's a table of a revelation, revelation of the word of God and the power of God. It's a table of ministry. It's a table of teaching. What if our Christianity end up being table ministry? What if our Christianity end up being all about finding another table just to be friends with someone instead of in mass, in relationship, instead of in mass meetings, in fellowship, in communion, in union? See, I believe God's saying something to the body of believers here today. I believe that he's saying something uh, to us so that, that we can reach out into our community. We can reach out in different ways into our community. But I believe a lot of what God wants us as Christians to do is find ourselves at a table of fellowship, at a table of friendship, at a table of compassion, and table of caring, 
so that we reach out in a gentle way, not in a harsh way. And if they're resisting, just say, I'm sorry, I won't bring this topic up again and find out what they do. It's, it's, a, it's a wise word. I won't, say, I won't bring this topic up again because a, a wise word uh, then what could soften their hearts and say, I want to hear more. And then we need to find ourselves in the Word of God again. We need to find ourselves researching uh, what's happening in the world today because what's happening in the world today is done. Uh, it's, 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 out, it's in the open, but it's secretly in the open. It's, it's not even a secret. It, some of this stuff, the research that we have to do is kind of boring. But it's, it, there's revelation, there's insight and understanding and ask the Holy Spirit to help you uh, when you're doing that. So this morning what I want to do is I want to pray for people that have tuned in to me this morning. And uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this because I believe that as you're tuning in this morning, you might have drifted a little bit away from the things of God. You might have understood some things about end time events years ago and it scared you then. Well, it shouldn't scare you now because this is a time of change and it's a, it's a time of change for the body of believers. It's a time of change uh, for the church. It's a time of change for the world and the world is going to change whether we like it or not. I think the ball is rolling and we can't stop it. The snowball is coming down the mountain and we can't stop it. <coughs> So I just believe that God is up to something here today. And if you're here today and you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, I'm encouraging you to rededicate your life to the Lord. So let me pray with you. Lord, I just ask for our friends that are watching here now uh, by live stream. I just pray that as the power of God uh, brings an encouragement into their hearts right now, just to pray and say, Jesus, forgive me for how cold I've got. Jesus, forgive me. Uh, for how indifferent I've got to Christianity, how indifferent I've got to praying, how indifferent I've got to reading the Bible. Jesus, I ask that you would help me to return to fellowship and communion with you. Lord, I just, I just see that uh, there's many that want to return to you, and they're going to find themselves at a table with their Bible open. They're going to find themselves at a table uh, with the... Uh, um, their uh, software on their phone or iPad, searching the scriptures, connecting the dots. They're going to find themselves at a desk that's like a table, studying and researching so that they have something to share with someone else. Lord, I just call in those today by the love of Jesus Christ uh, that need to rededicate their lives to you, whether they're believers and drifted away, whether they've been believers and gone far away, Lord, they're coming back. Many are coming back right now. And so I just thank you for it. So we're just asking, Lord, that as they come back, that they will find their, their place of repentance, and but they'll find hope in the word of God today and in this uh, word. So thank you, Lord, uh, for this word today. And so I just want to encourage uh, anyone that's uh, um, been uh, praying today to give us a... Uh, a call. Contact us as a church. Uh, uh, write to us uh, uh, and, and let us know uh, what it is that God is doing in your life. We certainly like to know if you've prayed for the first time and, and um, never accepted the Lord before. And we want to pray with you, encourage you, give you some encouragement, give you some scriptures. If you're close here, we'll, we'll give you some material to look at as well. So uh, I want to take another moment here to, uh, if you have prayer requests, uh, that you would uh, uh, send in your prayer requests. I don't see any prayer requests up there uh, yet. Maybe they're coming here now. But uh, I, I just want, I want to give someone else a word here this morning. I want to give uh, a person that has been a, a believer and hasn't found their place in the body of believers because... It seems like there's too much striving for position and recognition and you don't feel like you've got what it takes to, you know, to be up front or, or to be noticed in the church. But my word this morning is speaking directly to you that you're going to have a ministry at your table. I see 
a woman, a middle-aged woman, and that can go any which way you want to take it, I guess. You can, but I see a middle-aged woman at a table and it's tea. Uh, you like teas and lots of kinds of teas. I see, uh, I see like flowers on the window, uh, on a windowsill, or maybe it's inside or outside the windowsill, I'm not sure. But it's a very decorated kitchen. It's a, a warming kitchen. It's where people come to feel not just warm in temperature wise, but warm, peaceful. And it's your place and you've created it. But the Lord is saying to you today, I want you to open up your kitchen. I want you to find a neighbor that's, uh, uh, that's a little bit lonely and just have them over for tea. You don't have to have an agenda. Just let the conversations flow naturally. God wants to use you as an example of what he wants to do through this scriptures, these scriptures today and the table. And so it's, it's like 10 in the morning and it's tea time. And it's ministry time. It's, it's God's calling you uh, to take opportunity to reach out to someone around you. So um, I see some prayer requests up there. Uh, uh, Penny's asking a prayer for finances and uh, for her house to sell. Lord, I just, uh, we, we prayed uh, for Penny before, but we asked the, the, the people that are listening to this uh, uh, call this morning to say Penny's name. Just say her name. Penny, we say your finances are going to increase supernaturally by the power of God. We release the power of God into your finances. And, uh, and, if, and, and we just pray for the, her house to sell at the right price and the right way to the right person and let the glory of God be manifested in, in the sale of her house. I got a little question around the, the sale of your house, Penny. Uh, and so I just, uh, uh, I know that you feel that you have to sell it. So I just want God to reveal himself in the sale of your house or your finances. So supernatural that if your finances are blessed in such a, uh, a wonderful way that you can, you can overcome the need to sell your house. So Lord, I just see two things here that finances need to increase in such a wonderful way anyways uh, so that she have uh, she won't have to sell her house but lord if her house has to sell because i'm not getting any revelation on that i just say lord if her house has to sell let it be done supernaturally and i declare uh, supernatural finances for penny in jesus name amen and everyone agreed and said amen yeah so that's you're saying that in your house and your car or wherever and uh, deanna uh uh she uh, wants prayer for her family to come together. There's lots of um, confusion there in her family, not really all connected. So, Deanna, this message is about the table. So that means that there's going to be some forgiveness at your table. It starts at your table with you and Sean just forgiving those that have hurt you or those that have offended you, uh, those that have... So forgiveness has to flow. And as, as your hearts are healed, uh, and as you've reached out to others and they haven't reached back, that you'll let it go. And that healing will come. I speak healing into the family, Lord. I speak healing into uh, Deanna's family. I say life is coming into their family. I say life is coming to uh, Deanna and Sean. Life of Christ. Uh, uh, total soul restoration to the call of God that's on their lives and so we just declare Lord uh, their families coming together and uh, so uh, Susan here is, uh, is asking for prayer for a knee uh, to be a complete healing uh, from osteoarthritis and uh, so we speak to Susan's knee and we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the glory of the Lord will be manifested in her body now, that she'll feel the warmth of the power of your presence on her knee. And we rebuke osteo now in Jesus' name. And we say that Susan will fulfill the call of God that's on her life, Lord, and that it won't be in sickness, but it'll be in health and divine health and divine life uh, that, so that she can do what you're calling her to do in this day and in this age. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. So, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone that's been writing in here. I think I got another prayer request coming up. Uh, uh, so there'll be, uh, there's no, uh, I might as well put this out now for those that are watching. There's no prayer meeting for the evening uh, tonight. We usually have a few here, <clears throat> four, five, six. I think we had nine last week, uh, but no prayer tonight. Mother's Day, uh, phone your mom, uh, take her somewhere where there's not a crowd, and uh, you can have her at your home, I guess, or her home. Uh, so thank you for all that you're doing. We're so thrilled here at Lighthouse Church what God is doing here <clears throat> uh, in the week. Uh, you can give by... Uh, uh, e-transfers and that's happening more and more uh, God is blessing us uh, we were we felt like we were stuck a little bit here financially but at last month in, in what in April God has really blessed us and so thank you thank you thank you for giving to Lighthouse Church uh, we just want to fulfill the call of God that's on this body of believers we've got great vision and dreams of what uh, can take place and so we just want to thank you for your giving and uh, so uh, you can find all that on giving, how to give online. And uh, uh, we're still making packages uh, uh, in the week for f uh, families that are in need. So give us a call at the church if you know someone else that's in need. And, uh, and try and find out some of the specifics of what their needs are if you can. Find out what kind of food they like, uh, what they don't want. Um, I know we've been helping some. And uh, they weren't too in. in, in excited about having more bread so what is it that you need you know so do you only eat tomatoes or something i don't know so uh, but uh, and uh just pray for us here as, as a church leadership and how we move forward with the things of god and, and uh, um, uh, just give jennifer some encouragements she, she's just been a real blessing to us and uh, susan uh, uh, susan's been a blessing coming in helping with the food things uh, Lisa's been a blessing uh, with the video and all the sound stuff. It's amazing. We'd never be able to do it without Lisa. Uh, Jennifer is, is great with Facebook, too. She's just, she's figured it all out. She can't fi find out what's happening. She digs until she gets it. So bless Jennifer when you get a chance. And so um, I think we can call it off here now. Be blessed and 